Well, one man has been arrested after a scuffle between protesters and Gardaí erupted outside the Racket Hall Hotel in Ross Grey, County Tipperary, as a bus containing 17 asylum seekers arrived. Protesters have been outside the hotel since last Thursday, when it was announced the premises would be used for international protection applicants. Well, joining me to discuss this further is Fine Gael Senator John McGahan, People Before Profit TD Paul Murphy, from the Irish Independent, Sinead Ryan. And down the line is crime editor with the Irish Daily Star and Murr, Mick O'Toole. And live in Ross Grey for us this evening is independent TD, Matty McGrath. You're all very welcome to the programme. So this was the first uh, tranche of applicants to arrive into this particular hotel. We understand, Mick O'Toole, that there are going to be 160 people facilitated within this premises over the next couple of days. Can you briefly outline the sequence of events as you understand them to have happened today? So there, ha there have been protests at this site since last week. I understand that the, the asylum seekers or applicants were due to be housed in the Racket Hall Hotel last Friday. That was obviously delayed. There were significant protests. Uh, we know that there was a rally. Deputy McGrath was at it, I believe, on Sunday. So there were quite a lot of local people who were uh, opposed to this. So... Um, Gordy have been evaluating this and they said issued a statement after the events today that um, they mounted a uh, they mounted a confab, I suppose, with other stakeholders and the decision was made to bring in Gardy backed up uniform Gardy backed up by what's called the public order you know what you and I would call the, the riot squad. And the, the riot squad were in their vans and they escorted the van, the minibus containing 17 asylum seekers to the hotel. And then they decamped and effectively formed a cordon to get the asylum seekers from the, the bus into the the hotel. And that's when we've all seen that the footage, there did appear to be some scuffles, I suppose, between some protesters uh, and Gardaí. Perhaps the protesters are trying to break the lines or whatever, but there were there were clearly scuffles. And as you say, one man was arrested. Now, he was arrested under the Public Order Act. It's not the most serious of crimes, but he was arrested. So he was later released without charge. And there is now a file being prepared by the for the Director of Public Prosecutions by Gardaí. And just to be clear, I think a lot of the time now when we hear international protection applicants, we assume that it's going to be single males. But this was women and children largely? Yeah, no, I I wasn't there, but I, I've seen the, the video footage and you could definitely see women and children there. So it looked to me uh, that it was mostly women and children, if not all women and children, uh, who were being escorted in by the public order unit this, this afternoon. OK, and we know, as I said, that there are further applicants due to come into this hotel over the coming days. But there have been calls by protesters to gather this evening again at 7pm and to continue that protest. Is that happening, Mick? Yeah, yeah, I understand that the protest is going is ongoing. There is both the presence of Gardaí, now not the public order unit, uh, but ordinary uniform Gardaí, I suppose, and protesters. And I think it ebbs and flows. Some people go, some people come. But look, you know, there will obviously be a Gardaí presence there for quite some time. Like we have seen protests really right across the country at this point, Mick O'Toole, but I don't think we have seen this level of a Garda presence. We certainly don't think I've seen the public order unit escorting uh, mm. asylum seekers into a building before. Do you see this as a change, a change in tactics and strategy by the Garda as to how they're going to manage these protesters going forward? That, that's possible. I think Gardaí were stung by criticism, by criticisms of the initial stages of the the riots in Dublin on the 23rd of November. They, they were stung by that, and I think they've also been stung by the number of unconnected arson attacks in various other places around the country. So, you know, perhaps there has been a sea change. Now, look, people on the on the left and the right will both accuse Gardaí of being heavy-handed before. Gardaí do use force, and after the riots in Dublin. Commissioner Drury Harris did issue a, a circular to all Garda members saying you are entitled legally to use force. Now, you know, the Garda were at pains briefing after this to say, look, although the public order unit was there, they have access to various things, including he helmets, bat long batons and uh, shields. And none of that was uh, used today. And the Garda were wearing their soft caps. So they just seemed to be slightly passive, just like that, in forming a cordon rather than, you know, doing a what you might consider a baton charge or, you know, getting stuck into the, the protesters. It seemed that they were trying to be more passive 
in this case. But there, there's no doubt that guards have been stung by criticism, so this may be a response to it. All right, uh, Michael Trill, thank you for bringing us that update. I want to go to my uh, panel here briefly. John McGahorn, it does look like there's been a sea change here, a different response from Gardaí. Is this a new <coughs> strategy and is it something that is welcomed by the government? I wouldn't say it's a new strategy. I'd say it's reacting to what we've seen. So take Jackie Cahill, the local TD there. Uh, he was reported today that he had been given a live threat uh, where an individual told him that this they would burn this place down. He reported that to a Garda superintendent. We have seen where two uh, places, one that was earmarked, one that wasn't whatsoever, have been burned to the ground. So I think the police reaction today was warranted given the level of threat that we've seen in the first place. But I suppose when we've seen other protests, we'll all remember, it was the burning of you know tents around Sandwood Street. There did seem to be an approach where you stood back. That was how the Guardi handled it. This seems different. Look, we are seeing the public yeah, order I'm, unit yeah. accompanying these people to this hotel. And I was glad to see the public order unit there. And I think the uh, guards had a very appropriate response today as well, and the right response, because the guard are there were there to protect A, the asylum seekers, and B, to protect the people that were there protesting as well. And what I would say to conclude about it is, these people are humans. These were women and children who, Kira, might I add, are coming from situations that you and I can't even imagine in our worst nightmares. And they're coming here for safety and sanctuary. And to have adults shouting and screaming at them as they got off those buses like baying mobs. Mm -hmm. It reminded me as a child when I used to see as a 10 year old in the 2000, 2001, 2002 era of children my own age at Holy Cross in Belfast being shouted and spatted and screaming by adults. We are far better than this as a country. We really are better than this as a country. And that didn't make me proud today to be Irish. And right. we are better than that. Let's go to Matty McGrath, a local TD in the area. Were there baying mobs there today, Matty McGrath? Can I first say the line is very intermittent, so I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm standing here in Ross Grey tonight uh, alongside a group of local ladies. And the first thing I want to say was, I was here Saturday as well, and all weekend, huge crowds of very uh, decent people, ordinary people, no banging mobs. And these people today didn't cause any uh, rights. And to bring the right squad down here today was an affront to democracy as far as I'm concerned. All the people here want to is be consulted and to be listened to, that the town is full. A welcoming town who have taken so many already. They have over 85% of the uh, uh, IPAS uh, people who are in Tipperary are here in Rossway. This was a functioning hotel up to last Thursday and suddenly it's closed and this contract is done behind closed doors and no consultation with us, public reps, are much less with the people here. And Councillor Shane Lee, who wants to be here tonight, wanted me to say that also. And business people I've met here this evening are appalled because of what uh, is going on on the, on, the, on the media today. The people of Ross Grey, as I said, are decent people. There was no threat to anybody today. And uh, actual fact, I think three uh, ladies, three females and four children, and the rest were males who were brought in secretly. So they made the people walk through then, the young people and, and, and their parents. And that's unfortunate to make them go in there. Just literally to create a scene and to portray people of Tipperary as unwelcoming okay. and uh, anti-migrant, which they're not. OK, hold on, Matthew that's McGrath. The facts of the, the situation. But the protesters had said that's that the they facts. would, that the they had created a barricade and that they would block any vehicle that came to the hotel that had international applicants on the vehicle. So the presence of the public Please. order unit was warranted, some would argue. It wasn't warranted. My opinion, I will be asking the questions, the Minister for Justice and with the Minister or with the, with the Garda Commissioner. As I said, Ardney Garda, the, the seven in this town, where there used to be 27, we don't have enough numbers that we should have. The Garda need the support of the people and they get the support of the people in Grass Grey and all over Tipperary. But this was a bad day for Garda public relations to have people pushed and dragged aside that weren't threatening or, or in danger to anybody's life or, or limb. OK, let me just put that to Paul Murphy. Do you agree? I think Matty said earlier, this is a bad day for democracy. The Guardi should not have been there at the scene today. I thought it was a, a terrible day for all those people who, who stand for basic respect for other human beings, basic welcome for the human beings. I mean, my, my heart broke. People should look at the videos online of kids scared witless because they are literally being escorted into this place that's going to be their home. They've come from who knows what, uh, in terms of oppression, violence, war, what they've fled, young, young kids, and are being shouted at 
and have people trying to break through police lines to, to get towards them to what end, I don't know. So I, I think that is horrendous, what people saw. I think the vast majority of people, I would say, in Ross Cray, I would say around the country, reject that. Uh, those people who did it should be ashamed of themselves. But politicians like Matty McGrath, who spread lies and misinformation. I watched a video... Okay, I'm not I watched, quite sure I, you can make watched, an accusation that there's a, a lie in what he is saying. No, no, this I, is a hotel I, I in watched, the area that people no say question, is essential I, I watched, to the survival of the community in the area. I, I watched a video of Matty McGrath in Tipperary two days ago telling a crowd of people it's a colonisation of our country. Okay, it's a takeover of okay, our country. Matty McGrath, That's just far-right rhetoric that? with no basis in fact and no wonder it results in scenes like that. And the vast majority of people reject it and people are coming together, trade unionists, community activists, ordinary people, anti-racist activists, for a big mobilisation on the 24th of February to okay. say, no, we okay, reject look, this that's racism, a pretty strong we reject this hate. That you've made against Matty McGrath. Do you want to respond to that, Matty? So you're breaking up badly on me, but I do, of course, reject this out of hand. There was no racist comments today and no racist behaviour here on Saturday or all weekend or at the moment, and they're welcoming him. And there is other accommodation within 15 miles. I passed accommodation already signed up where these 17 people could have been brought today. And we try and negotiate a way around this here and have a peaceful uh, welcoming for those people. Nobody wants to frighten children or women of any, of any nationality, and that's not what the people here want. But this is a bit rich for for Deputy Murphy, the call, he uh, accused me of lying. He organised a mob that detained Joan Burton. OK, uh, all right, look at uh, 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 Matty McGrath, we really don't want to get into that. hours one day. That didn't happen, to, but that didn't happen today. Or nothing like it happened. It was peaceful. OK, uh, the colonisation comment, was that made, Matty McGrath? S sorry? Uh, Paul Murphy said sorry? that you said that there was a colonisation uh, happening. Was that a comment that you made? Look. Listen, many comments have been attributed to me, but I've been told by Minister O'Gorman and O'Brien that uh, 10,000 more will come this year and possibly 15,000 next year. I have been calling since April 2022 to have a debate around this, a sensible, balanced debate, and show, uh, uh, show us where we're going and a roadmap. There is no roadmap. We can't keep open borders and allowing that kind of numbers in here. Ross Grey certainly is full at the moment. They have more than their fair share. They are welcoming people, have proved that, and will uh, negotiate with people in a civil manner and I'm very surprised with Deputy Cahill to, to, to make that comment if he had information if it was said to him to portray people in Ross Grey nobody wants any building burnt nobody wants Aston and like that a burnt building is no good to anybody this was a functioning hotel which the business people and the townspeople had booked first okay. communions okay. confirmations uh, weddings you name it and funeral dinners and now it's gone okay let me just, Can I just let John respond to that Thank you very much. That is so nakedly political by Maddie McGrath to take a pot shot at Jackie Cahill, a man elected by the people of Tipperary, who had a legitimate threat reported to the guards, to then talk I about a sensible the debate. Board. Let's have a sensible debate, but using terms like colonisation, using in, terms in the like the planted. After talking, sorry, Maddie, I didn't interrupt you, if that's OK with you. To then get up in the doll, as Maddie did three months ago, and to talk about the Great Plantation, to talk about Davos, to talk about these grand conspiracies, you are now reaping what you have wrought over the last 18 months with your miss information, your conspiracy is what you've said in our national parliament. This is nakedly is political. This is basic politics. This is an election is in 10 months and this is looking for a couple of extra votes okay, out of ballot box. That's what this is. Sinead Ryan. Uh, a disgraceful comments. I just want to go to Sinead Ryan here because not everybody who is protesting there today will have been involved in the scenes that we saw. Do you have any sympathy for the community in Ross Gray and other communities who say, like Matty McGrath is pointing out, this is a hotel. It's not about refugees. We need this facility in our community in order for community to survive, we have no other services. Well, I do think that the people of Ross Gray and indeed Matty McGrath uh, are, are right. There are uh, single men that we should be scared of down there tonight, but it's not anyone in that hotel. It is those people outside uh, acting as if something has descended on them from another world. I'm thinking of small children looking out of the window of that hotel tonight. I've been in Racket Hall many, many times. And by the way, there are a hundred strangers in that hotel every single weekend. They come to weddings, they come to 21st, they time. come to events. Nobody's bothered about them being strangers to Ross Gray. And I'm thinking about small children and their mothers mm. 
uh, looking out the window at those protests tonight, I, I dare say that some of them think they haven't left where they came from at all, uh, if that's the so-called welcome they've got. And I don't know if anybody here on the panel has read Paul Lynch's book, uh, Prophet Song, which is the, the Booker Prize winner book. I would hand out a free copy of that to everybody sitting in Ross Gray and get them to read it tonight. There, for the grace of God, is any of us. OK, but to the point that some people in those communities will make, we feel we have taken enough. We feel there is a shortage of services. We feel there's a difficulty with hospital places, with GP places, with school places. And actually, rural Ireland is dying on its feet. And one of the things you need to survive is places like hotels, well, places where people can gather, as Matty said, to hold communions or weddings fine. or funeral gatherings. That's, that's the reality and of living a, there. As a cogent, clear argument, uh, I have no problem with that because the government, in one sense, has shot itself in the foot over this entire issue. Because what they have done is... Uh, uh, Matty's saying, oh, there's no consultation down there, and lots of other places have complained about that. This, this is a wartime situation a lot of these people are from. You don't have time for consultation. However... There is absolutely a way that the government could have handled this better. It did not know from where these people are coming from or indeed some of the numbers, but they definitely knew they were coming. So planning this around setting up uh, the way we did with City West, the Curra Camp is there. There's lots and lots of spaces that you could have planned this a little bit better mm. without arriving into very, very small towns and villages because it is that that creates the fear, which is entirely misplaced, by the way. There is zero evidence that anybody in that hotel tonight or indeed in any of the hotels that have been taken over are a danger to anybody. It's the people outside that are. OK. But, I, but that said, there is a consultative piece that hasn't been done. Uh, the Gardaí are between a rock and a hard place. When they stand back, they're criticised. When they wade in, they're criticised. Um, and I think that um, clarity around this whole issue has to be given now in a far greater uh, sense. Yeah, it, doesn't the government have to take real responsibility here, John? I mean, we had a re press release today from the department to say 190 <coughs> locations across the 26 counties have been identified and utilised in the last... 12 months. They've had to use 190 locations like Ross Gray, like this hotel, because they don't have the proper facilities to deal with the people coming in seeking refuge. And that's government failure. So, a couple of things. Of the 190 facilities that have been in place since January 2022, how many protests have we seen at 190? Maybe at a dozen, a handful? But it's and a the but vast you majority. It's not, it is not the best way to Protest house individuals. Two, 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 two points that I would say about this. In the vast majority, when you talk about protests, in the vast majority of situations, people are coming into communities, they're being welcomed. They're being welcomed by local people, they're getting involved in local communities, yes. and that's a very good thing. Yes, but uh, we have seen a change. Your, you back, have to say, we've seen three protests in the last seven days. There has been a change, John. Back, back to your question about uh, what are we trying to do as a government. Um, it's clear to me, Kira, that our job is to try and explain this as best as possible. Our job as a government should be to try and dispel as much misinformation as possible. A trope that is always thrown out is this concept of unvetted males. Doesn't exist. Everyone that comes to this country through IPAS is vetted. Their okay, fingerprints are checked. Okay, back to the point of having proper facilities like City West okay. that means that you don't have these points of conflict between communities who say, we just want to keep our hotel versus the government saying, we've got to find accommodation for people so, in need. So two things I'd like to say about that. First of all, one of the things the government are now looking at is legislation is being prepared. It's going to be passed very quickly. And it's about actually building dedicated areas where people who are coming through the IPAS system can be held. Yeah. Do you that, accept that that's very late? We are now two years into this crisis, this emergency, where we've had an increased number of people coming into the country. Yeah, but it's taken two when, years to get to this point. When you say the increased number of people, you have to look at how much people have actually come here. So, for example, in IPAS today, there's 26,000 people. Four years ago, that was 5,000 people. Yeah, exactly. So the have... government surely should have responded before now? Well, one of the things that we tried to do at the get-go was to try and... I, well, no, I think it's actually safe to say that even two years ago, before all this really kicked off, would any of us have been able to say that we'd have 110,000 new people living here? Difficult to know. I think we but could have I said really it a year do, ago, John. I, I really do believe, though, the way forward for this is what the government is doing, to have those centres built. That will take a lot of tension out of areas that we see. And the final thing is, the world is on the move. The world okay. is moving at the minute. We have more people coming to live here, but they're coming to live here because we're a good country Okay, very people want to live Briefly, here. Matty McGrath, if he's still there and if he can hear me, um, we understand there are further yes. international applicants coming to the Racket Hotel over the next couple of days. Given the hostile situation we saw today, would you be encouraging protesters to stand down? 
And could I, could I, like the protest is standing down at 10 o'clock at night, I understand, to allow those visitors to sleep and have some rest. It's traumatic for everybody. But again, to repeat, that the people of Ross Cray are very welcoming people, always have. They have so many people here working in the national, the international community, in the meat industry, and many other uh, facilities. And they will take people and have. But this was done ham fisted, and the government policy is a disaster. It's deliberate uh, putting people into areas like this without planning. So we need a proper policy policy that's cohesive and talking about building centres now two years into it is much much too late and, and then they talk about international obligations and Geneva Convention where are the obligations to, uh, to how house our home okay, our home are right. uh, 14,000 homeless 4,000 children as an no obligation to house those and we can do this then to persecute ordinary decent people like happened today it was wrong 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 and it can't be can't be made right all right look we're going to, have to leave that discussion uh, there for now my thanks to Martin McGrath and to uh, Meko for joining us.